way, way back in high school, I really genuinely thought that I wanted to be a sex educator. Like I was super into it. I was like, I'm going to go into reproductive health and I'm going to be a nurse practitioner and I'm going to work way up my way up to be like a clinical sexologist and like reform the sex education like industry. Um, and like when I got into it, I realized that like the people around me weren't really passionate about what they were doing and I kind of felt isolated. And so I would like be in my dorm room, like on Photoshop, making like album covers and like doing these things. Um, and my friend sat me down and like helped me realize that like sex, sex education, while I'm like still very passionate about it, was just not the path for me. Um, so then I did two years at community college at Community College of Baltimore County. And then um, I transferred from there to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, and I thought I was going for graphic design, like I thought I was going for visual communications, but like there they really, really emphasize a multidisciplinary approach. Um, so I was able to take classes in fashion and footwear and do a little bit of art and technology. Um, and I think like the intersection of visual, commu visual communications and art and technology is like where I really bloomed. Like that's where I really felt at home um, because I never was like quite satisfied just being in one or the other. Um, and so, yeah, then I interned at Wix with Groovy um, and it was like one of the most incredible summers of my life. And then from there, I freelanced for a bit um, and then landed a job at Universal pretty recently. So I am a creative technologist at Universal Music currently. That's amazing. Just like <laughs> finding your path and, you know, trying to do what you like. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, is it. <laughs> how, what is it like working as a creative technologist? You know, the experience, just like everything about it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of play. Um, so I think like I do a lot of work that people wouldn't exactly expect like to be to be a job. Um, so right now I am building websites and augmented reality experiences for artists um, working directly with labels. And a lot of it is like collaborating with these labels to bring someone's vision to life, um, but also just like keeping track of where technology is going. So more augmented reality, um, understanding like that you are able to do this certain thing with code and implementing that in like really, really amazing experiences. So like we're able to build custom video games. Um, we do like filters for Instagram and Snapchat. So it's definitely like a lot of fun and a lot of play. That sounds really interesting, you know, like just, I'm, I'm just thinking what you would be doing in a normal daily life. Uh, but um, I know that this is not something that you do usually. Uh, but say, for example, you had to hire someone, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to join your team. Uh, yeah. What would be the qualities that you'd like to have in that person? I would say definitely a drive to learn, just like an intense curiosity about them um because in my experience like it's it's great if you have like experiences that align with your role but just like everybody else if you're in a starting position if you're in any position you're gonna learn on the job right and so you can't expect someone to know everything about your industry and just like fit in seamlessly um like you're hoping for someone to grow with your group so definitely like curiosity, um, someone who is constantly learning. I think that especially for younger people, like people our age, who's like going into their first job, maybe an internship, just understanding like that they're, they're quick to learn um, and that they're passionate about what they do. Yeah, I totally agree. I think curiosity and just like, you know, having the opportunity to learn every day and being open to that is really important. Uh, I think personally, too, I believe that, you know, you should be open in, in, a, in an industry where, you know, everything's changing so quickly, you have to yeah. be on top of your toes and, you know, be able to learn every day. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, I think those are great qualities. Um, what do you think is uh, a designer in the industry right now that you look up to as an inspiration? Eric who? Eric <laughs> So um, I didn't really learn about him until he gave a talk at SAIC, but like just seeing his journey and seeing the way that he approaches design and very much coming at it from an unconventional standpoint um, and incorporating his own identity into his design has been like super transformative for me because I think that like when we're taught design in school, we're taught all these rules, right? You're taught like to compose your thing in a certain way that it has to look, that has to look, it has to be in this certain style. Um, And I think like that play is definitely encouraged but I have noticed like a lot of times designers will go and they will try to mimic another style. Um, And I think that works, especially if you're working with clients and you want them to have something that's trendy. But if you want to push design, you have to be willing to have a flop, to like make an absolute flop. Um, And the thing that I see in Eric, whose design is that he's constantly pushing with typography, with imagery, with 3D graphics. Like he collaborates with art directors that work in a lot of 3D media um, and just like fusing all those things to make something completely new. I think that he is definitely one of the biggest artists that is pushing design right now. He sounds very interesting. I definitely want to go and like just Google him and check him up. Um, He is amazing. His Twitter is like chef's kiss. His hot (laughs) takes, his design hot takes are hilarious. Oh my God. Um, I'm going to follow him right now. I think I want to check it out for sure. Um, I think like, as I said, you know, inspiration is something really important um, for everyone's design journey. And, you know, it's amazing that you found someone that you look up to as inspiration, as a role model. Um, Do you have someone in general, like this is a follow-up question, but just like someone in general that you've worked with and, you know, you really like their process or their design work, anyone at Universal, anyone at Wix, anyone at anywhere, just like your journey, anyone that you've found uh, and really appreciate their process work? I think this is like, I haven't spent much time at Universal, so I wouldn't be able to like give you the step-by-step process, but I think I draw a lot of inspiration from the process of studio artists. Um, because like within the corporate world, within Universal, everything is like very step-by-step. It's like generally pretty straightforward and you're doing a lot of repetition, but I like to draw like my inspiration from sources outside of my job. Um, So one person that like whose process is extremely unconventional to me, um, but I really enjoy was one of my professors, Claudia Hart. Um, So she does a lot of 3D digital art. Um, She recently did a talk about NFTs with the Hirshhorn. It was amazing. (laughs) Um, But just like thinking about to like what art is um, and understanding that like she just, she's like not afraid. She just makes things, right? She makes things and we'll put it out in its like most raw form. Um, And I think that's really, really inspiring because like within design, like you see things that are very polished and you see things that are very raw. So you see like a lot of brutalist design and then you see a lot of like UX design, you know, like within that range. And I think like as young designers, we're always pushing towards the polish, but we don't let ourselves explore the unpolished edges of everything and like the rawness and the newness. Like I love when design looks like when someone first touches Photoshop. I think there's something really, really just like genuine and wholesome about like some fresh eyes on what design can be, like absolutely ignoring the rules. Um, Yeah, I think like, just going to the roots of that have been really, really helpful in my process and like understanding my style of design. 
That's an interesting take. I think, you know, I, I agree. There's something about, you know, a big nurse design or there's something about that broadness uh, that you get when you're even, even when you're using a new software, you know, something that you've not used before and you're creating something new in it. Um, I feel like it gives you the same vibe. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think like, thanks for sharing your inspirations with us. Um, yeah, of course. In general, um, I'd like to ask in your in your design journey, I know that you've done a lot of work with, uh, you know, digital and uh, augmented reality and all of that, um, and which is mostly, you know, related to your career, uh, but maybe sometime more in time, you know, like maybe after 10 years or something. Uh, what is something that you'd like to do to give back to the design industry? It could be now, it could be later, but something that you'd like to give back as you know, a thanks or as an appreciation for what the design industry has done for you. Yeah, I think that the design industry and just like design as a whole for me is a way to connect community, right? And I think that like, I definitely wouldn't be here if I hadn't had the community and the friends that I do in Baltimore. So right now, like, I have a full-time job, um, and it's amazing. Like, I love working with Universal, but, like, within my personal career, I try to provide, like, accessible design to local businesses, um, and that's just what I'm doing on the side, and that's kind of my way of, like, seeing Baltimore as a community and investing in my community locally. I think that like the design community globally did an amazing thing over the summer with all the protests that were going on with providing free and accessible design resources to businesses, to activists, to communities that really, really need it. Because I think like as designers, like our job is to communicate a message, right? It is to spread a message. And if we can do that, if we have the knowledge to understand the way people understand design, the way people take messages, like the way, just like a way to capture attention. I think that that is an amazing way to push our, you know, our personal beliefs um, and just saving the world, trying to make it better. Um, the, like a designer's role is to help someone else. And I think that if you can do that locally, globally, just to push whatever you really, really believe in, that's the best way to give back to the community. I totally agree. I like I want that written on a t shirt. Um, <laughs> um, I think I think just in general, I can vouch for this last summer too. you made a website for a nonprofit organization that was nothing that you were getting paid for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that was nothing that you know, you were doing just out of your concerns. It was just like giving back. So definitely, I think all of us as designers should, you know, definitely keep that in mind that we need to give back, we need to do things um, to benefit the world. Uh, and I totally believe in the fact that us as designers the way we can spread messages is not something that everyone can do because we can use mm -hmm. those willpowers um to grab attention and and you know give emphasis on the things that actually need that kind of importance um Absolutely. so i think as designers we're, we're really powerful i i totally agree to that we really um, are what what is um, some advice that you'd like to give someone who's an upcoming designer or uh, you know someone just fresh out of school, um, someone who's who would want to work at a place like Universal or would yeah. want to be at a high post in any design firm or industry? Yeah, uh, my advice would be, I think two things. One is to shoot your shot. You know, that's like the mentality that I had going in to like job applications it was very rough i have a whole like i had a whole spreadsheet of like where i applied how far along in the interview process i got and just like an inbox of a lot of rejection letters <laughs> um but also like luckily a few offers right and so like just keeping with the mentality of you could get a hundred no's but all it takes is one yes um so just like keep shooting your shot like i like you're never underqualified, you know? Like if you're applying for a role for a role and you think like maybe you have a shot, you're never underqualified. Um, but also like within a personal design practice and just in life, like do whatever you want, you know, like whatever interests you, whatever you think you can try, whatever you think you can push, like I recommend just doing it, you know? 
um, and doing it before you're ready or before you feel like you're ready. Cause you're never going to feel like you're ready. So yeah, like do whatever you want. Um, and just explore. That's an amazing one. Just, you know, just start off whenever you feel like you're not ready. Cause I agree yes. you know, portfolios, resumes, as in uh, designers, we want to refine, refine, refine and keep refining and it's never going to get to the final. So I think keeping that same mindset for the personality and, you know, thinking about when you want to be ready for an interview is yeah, I agree to that. Um, yeah. Thinking about just in general, like the, the interview processes of uh, big companies, I know that, you know, obviously you've landed a job with Universal. Um, what was the interview process like? What was something that you felt was really important to keep in mind while going through the interview processes? Because I know for sure that, you know, big companies have a longer process. Uh, they mm -hmm. have a couple of rounds. They have, uh, you know, people that different people that you're talking to um what is something that you'd advise specifically in that region for upcoming designers yeah i think it's all about communication um so like if you're if you've applied and you've gotten past the first round the second round like on paper you're golden right like you're solid but after that after they found out that you're qualified that you have the skills that they need what they're looking for is if you're going to be a fit, right? And so like that in-person interview is really where you drive it home, right? That's really where you try to like get to know the person as an individual, right? Like you can see a company, you can see their work, but you, you don't always have access to the team. You don't, always, you don't always have access to like understanding the way that they communicate, understanding the hierarchy or the structure of the business, right? So I think like that's the most important thing to keep in mind is like not only like pushing your qualifications and how you'll be a fit, but also keeping in the back of your mind like if they're going to be a good fit for you. That's like, I feel like every answer that you give me is just like letting me, making me ask you more questions because I want to know. <laughs> Um, so, um, you, you spoke about rejections. You spoke about, you know, a full inbox of rejections. Um, it builds character. How do, you, <laughs> how do you, um, you know, just like deal with it? How do you not feel demotivated? Cause I know for sure that if I get, you know, a rejection email, I'm questioning myself. I question what did I do wrong? Or am I not fit for this role? Or, you know, am I not good enough? Do I, do I just quit? Should I just be, you know, working at McDonald's? Like these are a lot of questions that, you know, keep coming in. What is something that you would, um, you know, like advise the, the upcoming designers to deal with that rejection? Um, well, I'm not, I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> I'm still working on dealing with rejection, <laughs> but I think like very much in retrospect, just like it was a lot of work in confidence <laughs> and motivation. Um, and like a couple of times just staring yourself in the mirror being like, you are, you're good enough. You are more than qualified. <laughs> but I think like understanding that this is a very, very competitive industry. Right. And just sticking with the mentality of like, all it takes is one yes. Because there's always going to be someone that is like maybe a little more qualified than you. And there are always going to be a lot of people that are way less qualified than you. You know, but I think just like shooting your shot because a lot of times like it's a numbers game. So like if, and like a lot of times I have applied to places where I've applied just because like, I thought it would be fun and I got a rejection letter and ultimately understood that like whatever's mine will come to me.